Couple other things to know here. Let's let's talk about them real quick. The Panthers offense under Andy Dalton look way better, Tyler. Like we saw Chuba yeah. Hubbard hitting the ground. We saw these passing game options. Deontay Johnson looked like the player that everybody drafted and hoped he would be in this offense. Feeling good now? We're locked in. Carolina good? They solid? Or I you know? I mean, for me, last week I said this like these guys are buy low candidates. I would be buying all the Panthers players right now. I'd be buying Jonathan Brooks. I know we haven't heard much, but I I do think this is a decent offense. I think that Bryce, uh, and, and once again, this is kind of what I said earlier, like Bryce Young was thrown into a terrible situation. Like this was not, it, it's it, the, the Panthers really haven't been a stable franchise. Um, he like, unfortunately for a lot of quarterbacks, like the best thing for these guys to do a lot of time is just kind of sit and learn. Andy Dalton has been, has been this team's best quarterback. Like he has been. And for unfortunately for Bryce Young, he was just thrown in there and they were like, all right, you're the first overall pick. You need to play. And it probably would have been best just to have him sit there and not lose his confidence. So for me personally, like Andy Dalton, just like he's been a good player throughout his entire career. I know he's an older player, but he's like he's like Joe Flacco esque, just a guy who can get it done. Like he's a savvy vet who understands the game, who knows where the ball needs to go. They have decent weapons. And right now you just had um Adam Thielen, he was placed on on, I, yep. on IR. Oh, so okay. I think this is very good for Deontay Johnson. Like I, I already, I love Deontay Johnson because I think Deontay Johnson is just good, and you're actually able to see that. And I think he will be continue to be good. But this could be interesting for like maybe Xavier Leggett is able to step up here and be a guy like the number two option in this passing offense for a guy like. Uh, did Andy Dalton have 300 passing yards? I want to see it over 300 passing yeah, yards this weekend. Was, like he's he he's. He's he's able to sling, like you said, sling the football. He's able to move this offense and score points. So I have a lot of confidence for this team going forward for fantasy football perspective because, once again, I look at this as like a Joe Flacco situation. Andy Dalton's going to go out there. He's probably going to throw for 300 yards, two interceptions, two touchdowns. But, like, it's going to move the offense. They're going to score points. So I think this is very good going forward. I'm not overly optimistic. I don't share the same optimism as you do. I, I think they'll be good, but I think we just caught a beat up, kind of morally down Raiders team. And we we need this was inspired football from the Carolina Panthers. And I think this was a response to some of the bad play that had been on the field and just a breath of fresh air for this team. So I wouldn't like Deontay Johnson to me is still going to end up in this flex territory. I don't think he's a wide receiver three moving forward. I still think he's going to be a questionable start on a week to week basis. He'll be more consistent than he had been. Um, but I do like some of these other options. Uh, Xavier Leggett, I think has a deep kind of dart throw for the second half of the year, especially is going to get a lot more playing time right now with, uh, with Adam Thielen hitting IR. So they talked about, he was going to be out for an extended period of time. I, I haven't seen the update as far as the expectation, but Xavier Leggett is going to have additional opportunity. I think that's a player who, I'd want to at least have on the bench just to see what happens and just to see how it is moving forward. So the, the interesting part to me was the run game. You mentioned like Jonathan Brooks coming back. I think seeing Chuba Hubbard play well in this game and, you know, it, it kind of complicates things because we also saw Miles Sanders get into the end zone as well. So when even when Jonathan Brooks comes back, it's like I think that these guys like Chuba Hubbard right now, is like, I want to say he's a top 20 running back in fantasy, and that's not because of – he's been great. It's because of one good game. It's just, yeah. I think that this running back room is going to be deep until like their bye week, which I, if I remember correctly, was like week 11 or 12, somewhere around there. So I, I think that this might be a committee up until then. And we won't see Jonathan Brooks even take over as a starter until then. It's just, if this offense is humming, if it does look good and Jonathan Brooks does happen to take the lead in this backfield, then shit, after after that bye week, we might be talking about a player who does have weekly RB2, high-end RB2 upside. So real quick, uh, two wide receivers saw 14 targets this week. Who were they? Who do you think they were? Two wide receivers saw 14 targets this week. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Deontay Johnson. I figured that was one. Who's the other? Rasheed Rice. He's oh, a, yeah, that makes dude, sense. He's yeah. a stud. He's, uh, he's, uh, but, he's been like, all in. He, he's been so good. I mean, this team had 37 pounds. I, I really like if you think that Deontay Johnson's a wide receiver three, I would be buying low. Like that's that's low. I think you were you guy, him as a wide receiver two. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think this is a high end wide receiver two. So in, like a top 15 point, receiver the rest of the way in, in full point PPR. I would say definitely a top 20 wide receiver in full point PPR. Like this is what we wanted. 
This is this is what he can be. And with Andy Dalton, I firmly believe that because I also look at it this way. We we talked about this when they when Bryce Young was benched. Like, yeah, this is bad. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. bad for Bryce Young. Very bad. Like, does this team hold him? Do you think they I, I don't know if you can trade him? I don't I don't know if any I, team I would... think this. This is what I think. And I think it's easy to look at one game with Dalton who's playing inspired and think like, yo, this is great. He's back. But then this is also a player who we've seen like was driven out of yeah. uh, Chicago. Like there's there's just times when he does not look the part. So I, you know, I, it's cool. Like you kind of bring it back Flacco, like Flacco for whatever reason, just like played out of his mind last year. <laughs> I don't know that we get Dalton like that for the next pursuit. If, if, if we get that kind of Dalton or we get any form of this Dalton for the rest of the year, and this is who the starter is for Carolina for the rest of the year, he's a QB too, especially if you think Deontay Johnson's a top 15 guy. I just don't, I don't see that at a Dalton. I think he's a little bit more inconsistent than we remember. And I think Deontay Johnson's probably going to feel some of that at times, especially when he goes up against better defensive units. So that's the only reason kind of pessimistic on Dalton. And I think that they hold on to Bryce Young. I think yeah. they hold on to Bryce Young because if Dalton does struggle, this now becomes a, a team that is still focused on their future and still has to, has to find out what they have. If they don't move him by the deadline, I think we see Bryce Young play again this year in the second half. What if Dalton just continues to kind of light it up here like what what do you think what, happens with Bryce Young next year I think Bryce Young will have one more opportunity to prove he's the guy in Carolina and it all hinges on his performance if he can show improvement I think they stick with them if not I think he's out of there do you think he it wouldn't be surprised like to be honest, get a chance with another team but I think so it wouldn't be surprising be like though. fields it wouldn't be surprising to see him traded it wouldn't, and it wouldn't be surprising like Miami if they need him. They they want him to go back up to it for a little bit. It'd be a good player to have in there as far as like good yeah. weapons around him can just come in and, and either learn from Skylar Thompson or be ready to play behind Tua. Like I think there's some media opportunity for him there. So I'm not fully giving. I I've never been a big Bryce Young guy. This offseason I thought he was a little bit more of a value, but I still think that there's a lot of room to grow for him as a player, and <laughs> no pun intended, a lot of room for him to grow. <laughs> <laughs> last thing before we get out of here man uh bucky irving rashad white how do you see his blackfield playing off because there's a lot of concern about rashad white bucky irving has earned more snaps according to todd Bowles, and uh this is a thing where you you never want to see this if you drafted a guy like rashad white out of your rb1 you don't want to hear oh the backup is earning more touches the guy that we drafted him we brought in is is earning more reps you think this is uh you think this is something to be worried about, or do you think that this is just noise? I mean, I would definitely be concerned. Um, I was not very big into Rashad White heading into the season. And the reason why is just because right now we talked about how bad DeAndre Swift is. DeAndre Swift on the season is averaging 1.8 yards per carry. That is dreadful. That is so bad. Rashad White's right next to him, 2.1. And, and Rashad White has 31 attempts. Like – the problem with Rashad White, and this was always the problem for me, and why I wasn't super high on him, is because he's been he's he's a good receiving back. He is a pretty good receiving back. He's able to make explosive plays in the receiving game. Um, but in the running game, he's dreadful. He's been the worst running back, the worst running back in the NFL, really, since he's come into the league in terms of just pure running stats. He's been uh, near the bottom in terms of explosive play rate, a yards per carry. Um, yards per uh, yards per touch, um, forced missed tackles per touch, like in terms of running the football. So he's been awful. And Bucky Irving has actually been really good. I want to say Bucky Irving currently is in second in terms of like guys who are actually seeing um, like seeing carries. Where is he at right now? I want to say he's over. Yeah, six six point one yards per carry, and that's on twenty five attempts. Like he's been. Good. And, and the problem with Rashad White is just he's been a volume based player. So if the volume kind of goes down, it's kind of like Najee Harris's rookie season. Najee Harris saw a ton of volume, but right. it, he wasn't super efficient. If that volume goes down, he's not that efficient to really make up for that loss of volume. And I think that's kind of what is going on with Rashad White, where he does lose that volume to Bucky. And they've already, you know, like you said, they've already come out and said that Bucky's earned more touches going forward. He's going to touch the ball more. So I would be definitely concerned if I had Rashad White. The one saving grace is the receiving work, though. Um, he's a good receiving back, and Bucky really hasn't eaten into that yet. But early down touches definitely would be concerned going forward with Rashad White. Uh, you can kind of tell, like, he 
there was the expectation that like Rashad White was going to miss this game, and I kind of feel like he played this game to hold on to his starting role. <laughs> uh, like this kind of yeah. felt like, yo, no, let me get on the field because I know the team is feeling Bucky Irving, but he still outproduced him, and it's like. I, I, I liked Rashad White last year. I didn't like him as much this year because of where you had to take him. I think yeah. there was some room to grow. I think you had to take him as a top 12 running back this year. It was nothing but kind of like four that was round, available yeah. for him. So hopefully you didn't take him too high. And I think this is, if I was holding Bucky Irving, I would trade him as like an RB3 moving forward. You would trade Bucky Irving? I would hold Bucky oh, Irving as like Rashad an RB3. White. If somebody wanted to offer me like, a starter, a top 25 guy for Bucky Irving? Sure, I'd take it. But like, I yeah. think I'd be holding out for second half of the year and that Bucky yeah. gets somewhere between 12 to 15 touches. I don't think I'd be wanting I mean, to trade him. Like, If he continues to do this, I, I do think there's a world where he just supplants Rashad White. Like, Rashad White has been bad Like, like yeah. I, in terms of running the football. He's been awful. So I think at best it's like a 50-50 split. I don't really see a supplant. I see more like 50-50. That, uh, that the one happen. thing I will say is it, Rashad White becomes – uh, like honestly borderline droppable if Bucky Irving eats into the receiving work if that's a split that's a massive concern because that's where Rashad White is makes his money so I'd be very concerned uh, one last thing before we go because I do yeah. want to talk about it uh, oh, how about them Steelers three and oh top of the AFC I ain't managed we can talk about your team because I ain't gonna talk about my team right now man but yeah that was yeah I ain't gonna talk about my squad but we can, we can talk about your squad they they doing Justin Fields bro what do you think about – like, I was watching that game. I think Fields – like, obviously, it's only three weeks, but I thought Fields looked pretty good as a passer, which is encouraging. Do you think – like, you think there's no shot that this team right now goes back to Russ, like, if he's healthy? No, nah, I think they found their guy for the future. And this is the difference between winning organizations and losing organizations, and you can see it immediately with this change – for all the deficiencies that Justin Fields may have as a passer and his pocket presence, this team has figured out a way to, to play winning football with that. And that's what you want to see. The added development, you get a guy like Arthur Smith, who everybody was down on. He's putting Justin Fields in really good spots right mm -hmm. now. And I think just Mike Tomlin, the trust that he has in Fields, it's like he won the job. I, I don't see a world like why would you go Especially back to this week? Up? Like he – like. They and and Mike Tomlin said this too in the in the pregame um, that they they did have like limited Justin Fields first two weeks of the season. They said they were going to open it up for him this week and see what he's got. And I think he answered like he played pretty well. I, I know that like a lot of people will say, well, you know, they they lost Bosa, they lost you know Justin Herbert, which was a big blow. But like, dude, minus five yards of total offense in the second half of the chargers it doesn't even i don't care who you are who's on your out that's that's disgusting like yeah that is ridiculous so uh, i think the steelers i mean obviously i'm, I, I'm yeah, you like, get over I'm here you get to you get to tony toot your horn a little bit we'll be back in the later in the season though when i can bring up my niners but until the next one, we'll, see you guys, we'll see you guys a little bit later this week man anything else you got before we head off no i i think that this week is big um, and we'll talk about this a little bit next time, but this is a big week because this is the fourth of the season. You're able to really see trends that are really starting yeah, to happen. We'll you already kind of see that, but yeah. On the next time we're on, we'll talk about things to look for for the upcoming weeks. But until then, we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.